Kid President said doing nothing is a great way to change nothing. You and I, we like f News reporter said it all started at 8.45 on a clear Tuesday morning. This, Justin, we're looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers. Another one just hit the building. Wow. There are no words. It appears that uh, something hit uh, the Pentagon on the outside of the fifth corridor. We have a report now that a large plane crashed this morning uh, north of the Somerset County Airport, which is in western Pennsylvania. It all started at 8.45 on a clear Tuesday morning. We had a live camera up on what looked like a smoking slash across one of the World Trade Center towers. A passenger plane had flown into it. I remember some of us... News reporters CNN said if you don't know already, 9-11 is a very a sad moment when towers hit the, the Twin tower. Towers and the that Pentagon. That was at 9.03 a.m. And at that point, there was this deepening dread in everyone. Something was wrong in a way we'd never seen before. Airports, bridges, tunnels in New York and New Jersey shut down. Within 30 minutes, President George W. Bush said we were under an apparent terrorist attack. And minutes after that, every airport in the country was closed. That had never happened before. It wasn't over, though. At 9.43 a.m., a third passenger jet crashed into the Pentagon. Dark smoke rolled up from that part of that huge building. All eyes and many cameras were on that and the two burning towers in New York. As all of us watched at 10.05, one of those towers gave way where it was smoking, the top part crushing down on the rest of it, sending up debris, boiling gray clouds. Five minutes later, part of the Pentagon collapsed, and a fourth hijacked jet crashed in a rural part of Pennsylvania. The White House, the United Nations, the State and Justice Departments, the World Bank, all evacuated. America-bound Atlantic flights were rerouted to Canada second Trade Center tower came down at 1028. So many closings, evacuations, shutdowns. Except for emergency response teams, the heroes of 9-11, the country virtually stopped what it was doing and gathered around TV screens. The president appeared just after 1 p.m. and asked Americans to pray. There wasn't much else we could do. The destruction was more or less done around 1030. It was less than two hours from the first crash but the change it inflicted was immeasurable. More Americans were killed on September 11, 2001 than on the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. And when President Bush addressed the nation that night at 8.30, his tone was one of sympathy, resolve, warning anyone who'd planned or supported the attacks. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbored them. The difficult days that followed, we learned that the Al-Qaeda terrorist group led by Osama bin Laden was responsible for all of this. And America's attention and anger turned to Afghanistan. Taliban leaders were giving Al-Qaeda a safe place to live and operate. On Wednesday at 8.40 a.m. Eastern, near the time when the first hijacked plane hit the North Tower of the World Trade Center, the 9-11 Memorial and Museum in New York holding a ceremony to honor the victims of the September 11th attacks. This includes the first responders as well, more than 400 emergency workers, including firefighters, police officers, and medical technicians, gave their lives trying to rescue people in the doomed World Trade Center towers. The names of the 2,753 people killed in New York City, as well as the hundreds of others killed at the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., and in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, will be read. At the Pentagon Memorial, there are 184 benches representing the 184 people who died there. 
U.S. President Donald Trump is scheduled to attend an observance ceremony on Wednesday alongside U.S. Defense Secretary Mark T. Esper and the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Marine General Joseph F. Dunford, Jr. And at the Flight 93 National Memorial in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, the names of the 40 passengers and crew members who were killed there will be read starting at 10.03 a.m., the time when their plane was crashed into the field. There are events like this planned across America on the 18th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. They'll include moments of silence, movie screenings, music, symbolic craft projects, messages of gratitude or hope, all in remembrance of the worst act of terrorism in American history and in honor of the victims and those who gave or risked their lives to save them. The 9-11 attacks led to the War on Terror, an international effort led by the United States to fight terrorism organizations worldwide. That began with targeting the Al-Qaeda terrorist group in Afghanistan, and thousands of American troops remain in the unstable Asian country to this day. The beginning of today's show gave you a sense of what it was like to observe the events of September 11th as they unfolded. They brought a uniquely challenging experience for the reporters who covered them live. This is one of the most memorable shots from that day. This is Aaron Brown on the roof of CNN's old bureau in Midtown Manhattan. Everyone has a 9-11 story. Mine starts with hearing the words, what channel is CNN on? We turned on the television and never turned it off. Aaron Brown helped me and so many other people feel a little less afraid that day. He anchored all the way until midnight, until one in the morning. He was never even supposed to be on that air that day at all. There has just been a huge explosion. We can see uh, a billowing smoke rising. And I can't, I'll, I'll tell you that I can't see that second tower. And we see this extraordinarily and frightening scene behind us of this second tower now just encased in smoke. What is behind it, I, I cannot tell you. But just look at that. That is about as frightening a scene as you will ever see. You must have known through that smoke there was nothing there, but you couldn't see it yet with your own eyes. Um, I felt in that moment profoundly stupid. Um, Why? I, I will tell you, because I... I will tell you that a million things had been running through my mind about what might happen, about the, the, the effect of a jet plane hitting people above where the impact was, what might be going on in those buildings. And it just never occurred to me that they'd come down. And I thought, it's the only time I thought, maybe you just don't have what it takes to do a story like this, because it just had never occurred to me. Look at one other moment. This is the second tower falling uh, when you did seem more prepared for, for what we were seeing. There, has, there is a large fire at the Pentagon. The Pentagon has been evacuated. And there's, you can see, perhaps the second tower, the front tower, the top portion of which is collapsing. Good Lord. There are no words. Silence is what you used in that moment. You see it now, it's out to you. Um, first of all, from the moment the first tower fell, there was a clock ticking. And it was ticking in my head. It was ticking in the heads of hundreds of millions of people uh, in America and a billion people around the world who were watching it. Because if the first tower fell, the second one was going to fall too. In that moment, there were men, mostly men, firemen and, and policemen, who were running into that building that was collapsing, and knowing that they were never going to come out. And um, I think when that building fell, I understood better than at any other point in my life, before or since, what the word hero meant. It's not that we didn't try to tell that story great. It's that the story itself is too great to tell. We're at the point now where this really is yes. history. It was something that I was fortunate professionally to do and painful as an American to live. It's a, it's a weird contradiction that right. journalists live with. The ambivalence of, of, on the one hand, loving the big story and hating the fact that that story.
happening. News reporter said so I'm going to show you guys some videos about 9-11. News reporter said warning some may contain minor swearing I'm not sure. Today, of course, is a day of remembrance. The 9-11 attacks on America. You're looking at pictures of ceremonies now underway at Ground Zero. Fifteen years later, the wreckage of the Twin Towers has long since been cleared, and a new tower has risen in their place. Even so, sorrow and healing share the site in equal measure. With Martha Teichner now, we pay our respects. Are they the tears of a nation weeping? Or a soothing rain? forever trying to wash away the horror of what happened here. News reporter said instead of 15 this is years where the ago, twin it was 18. Stood. Look down. You cannot see the bottom. And you cannot come here and forget for a moment that achingly perfect blue sky morning. September 11th, 2001. Right right oh, there's now. another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right. oh. Oh my God. When the planes plane hit. When the towers fell. When nearly 3,000 people died on this spot. It is hallowed ground. But 15 years later, life coexists with death. Some people see a cleansing, a catharsis when they see the water. Others see tears. What do you see? I see tears, but I also see diamonds. Judith Dupre has spent more than 20 years documenting the World Trade Center site and has written a book about its transformation since 9-11. This project is as much a part of 9-11 as the falling towers were. It's all on a continuum. Life is for the living. People need to live. It is a way of honoring the dead. Since this memorial opened in 2011, more than 28 million people have gazed at the names of the 9-11 dead, those killed at the World Trade Center, also the 40 who died at Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and 184 others at the Pentagon, a rose means it's someone's birthday. Having your son's name on this panel, uh, what does that mean to you? Well, hopefully they're not going to forget him. Lee Ielpi's son Jonathan was 29, a firefighter killed in the South Tower. I brought the First Lady of Japan here. She immediately did this. Water is very special. It's like holy water. Yeah, exactly. ILP was one of the so-called band of dads, retired firefighters who raced to the Trade Center site to help, and then spent months digging through the rubble for the bodies of their sons. Of them all, 
only his son was found. No, we found Jonathan on the 11th of December. 15 years on, ILP is still here, an advocate for September 11th families and co-founder of the 9-11 Tribute Center. When I had the coat, uh, I could hug it. Where his son's coat and helmet are now on display. Jonathan and my buddies are doing what they love to do. The birthday in my son's gear. Difficult. Nine months after the World Trade Center attacks, the site had been cleared, except for one nearly 60-ton beam. By then, covered with the names and photos and jottings of the people who had done the clearing. And just as it had, each time human remains were found. Activity at Ground Zero stopped when that last column was removed and reverently borne away. But when the 9-11 Memorial Museum opened in 2014, 12 years later, there it was, the building built around it. When you go there, it all comes back. The feeling you had that day if you lived in New York City. A sickness, almost. John was a music and dance king. You're haunted again by the faces of the lost. You know, she had just a wonderful, ancestral life. All the smiling people whose stories have to be told for them here. What you're looking at here is called Impact Steel. This is where 9 11 begins. On Friday mornings, Greg Carafello is a volunteer docent. I'm a survivor of two world trades, so I was here that day, and I owned a business in, inside the building in two world trade South Tower. The owner of a digital printing business in the South Tower, he nearly died on 9-11. His office was destroyed. These stairs are also known as a pathway to freedom. Because and yet here he is, week after week, right where it happened. What do you get out of it? I get a freedom from, the, from, the, uh, from that day. What do you mean? There's a certain uh, luggage that you carry since that day. And for me, it's a freedom to, to, to speak to the people and to share the experience, but also um, it's just cathartic. It lets me feel better in sharing my story with them. He's with another printing company now and could work anywhere. But his office is on the 85th floor of the new One World Trade Center. Greg Carafello is the only Twin Towers businessman willing to take a chance on the site again. Uh, it's an act of pride. Coming back to one of the greatest buildings that I've ever been involved with as far as looking at the, the way it's built and the beauty of it, I, I think is, uh, it, it, it's a salute to what we do in America. It is 1,776 feet high, counting its spire. And like practically everything else on the 16-acre site, it didn't happen without fights over its design, over its name. One World Trade Center instead of the original Freedom Tower. Over what if, God forbid, there were another attack. One World Trade Center is built around a concrete core. That core is made of the strongest concrete ever used anywhere on the skyscraper. And so, um, should anything happen, all of the occupants, as well as all the communication systems, everything you might need, it's all protected inside of the core. There are ghostly nods to the Twin Towers, but what's new here at what used to be called Ground Zero has been built to be beautiful. The Oculus is a train station and a shopping mall. When I came in here the first time, it was almost uh, heavenly in a way. Sunday morning commission photographer Daniel Jones to take these pictures. Fifteen years after 9-11, the World Trade Center is still a work in progress, with as many as three buildings not yet even begun. The cost? Fifteen billion dollars and counting. Too much or a necessary down payment? Unhealing.
26,000 people worked on this site. They gave it their all. And in the process of giving it their all, of doing backbreaking work, they also were the beneficiaries of the redemption that comes with that. They were after completion, they were after wholeness, and there isn't a single person that did not say they worked on this project on behalf of all those who died. It is a place to look down and weep, but it is also a place to look up and rejoice. News reporters said not only that about 100 boats came to save survivors on the island because of the smoke that covered the island. News reporter said this is going to be the last clip then we will have a moment of science do not forget about this moment.
News reporter said now for the moment of silence let's be quiet and please pray for those that fallen and those that helped. News reporter said OK thank you for joining me and please leave this video and never forget about this sad moment. News reporter said goodbye everyone. News reporter said never forget.